Hello friends! Today I'm going to do some embroidery to repair my favorite flat cap, which has some moth holes scattered throughout. I'm going to stitch some rose vines up one side and lavender up the other side. Because the cap is wool, I'm going to use cruel wool threads. I've already chosen my colors and have lightly chalked guidelines for my stitching. I'm going to use a green and brown to lay thorn stitch for my rose vines. I haven't chosen a color yet to use for the roses, but I'll figure that out later. One of these pinks will do. And I have a lighter green and a blue violet for the lavender. I also have my tools, my cute ceramic thimbles. I usually use a metal thimble, but it's been discoloring my fingers. Uh, scissors, needles, and chalk. Let's get started. I've already threaded my needles. Thorn stitch is a couching stitch, so I'm going to use two colors for this. The green is already started, and I've knotted the end of the brown. To simplify things, I'm going to use one of the moth holes to bring my needle through to the back so I don't pierce the lining. Then I come up here and that should be sturdy enough to start. I'm actually going to work this stitch in reverse because I like when the thorns point upward, but I want to start at the bottom and work up. This is a bit awkward to not get my hands in the way. I'm going to hook the stitch rather than working up and down, and I am making top-heavy cross stitches. Note that I'm coming up right next to the chalk line to start each stitch, then extending up and out. I do the same for the other half of the stitch and then move on to the next one, like so. I will always play thread chicken. This length of brown got me to the end of this vine. So I finish this thorn. I'll do a couple of small back stitches to secure the end, then bury it, then trim it off, and then I will do the same for the green once I find a pleasing curve. Then I work the other two vines in the same manner and the vines are done. I'm going to keep using this brown thread though to lay down the straight stitches for the spiderweb roses. Two long cross stitches and one more from the outside down into the center. This part isn't very exciting because it's brown on brown. I'm just putting flowers where they feel right or sometimes to cover holes. I have a few more holes at the front and the side, so I'm going to add another vine. I finished the last vine and all of the spiderweb bases, and using the green, I'm going to lay the long-tailed fly stitch that's the start of the tulip stitch buds. I will finish this stitch in pink later. I've marked my leaf to work the Cretan stitch which is a variation of feather stitch, very tightly packed. I'm scooping from the outer edge to near the middle, so each stitch goes from inside to outside. And just one of these doesn't look very much like a leaf, but sab put several of them together and the sort of spiky edges look very like rose leaves. Um, because this stitch is made up of fly stitches laid so close together, it takes a while and it uses a lot of thread, especially on the back. I work the stitches wider near the middle for some time. And then back down to quite narrow near the end. I finish the leaf with a long tail and then start the next one. All the vines and leaves are done and now it's time to finish the roses. 
I've chosen a dark pink for my roses, which should contrast nicely with the green leaves and brown hat. For the flower buds, I finished the tulip stitch with two single chain stitches. I like the thicker bud this makes. I will fuss the tension here until it's just right, especially since stitching so close to the seam of the hat is a bit tricky. For the blooms, I finished the spider web rose by coming up at the center. Pause to fuss my tension some more. Coming up at the center and weaving over and under the arms I've laid already until I think I've done enough. Uh, there's a balance between making the rows big enough that the petals show, um, but not so big that it loses structural integrity. I'm not sure how many wraps I do. Somewhere between five and eight. Then I bury the tail and start my next rose. I finished with the roses, so it's time to work the lavender. I'll start with a fern stitch for the upper part of the stem where the flowers will be. I often have to check the stitch order to get this right, but it's pretty much a series of back stitch arrows. Sides first. one after the other, and then the center down to start the next stitch. I work about eight fern stitches, then for the lower part of the stem I'll use a stem stitch, or rather an outline stitch. I use them interchangeably, but outline stitch carries the thread up like I do here. This one is pretty simple and goes down towards the front seam of the cap. Like so. I'm going to work the first leaf a little differently because first I have to darn this large hole. I'm not doing a very pretty job of it because I'm just going to cover it. I also tend to use chain stitch and reverse chain stitch interchangeably but to get the most out of thread chicken, I'm going to start at the tacking stitch for the single reverse chain, then do a straight stitch down the center for more coverage and to get me to the other end, then work the rest of the reverse chain stitch. Then I will finish with another straight stitch. Um, Pause to rethread my needle. That's the trouble with thread chicken. And then I'll tie off. This leaf is worked pretty much the same way to conserve thread. I start at the base, make a straight stitch up to the tip, take a little stitch to tack down my single chain stitch, go back down the middle with another straight stitch, then finish off the loop of the single reverse chain stitch. I'll tie off and start the next stem. I'm going to use a bullion knot for the lavender flowers. I recently figured out an important tip for this stitch that particularly applies to the two ply thread I have here, which is that wraps have to go in the opposite direction of the spin of the thread. My thread is S-twist, so if I Z-wrap around the needle, it will give me a tidier knot. My fingers are in the way because I need them for tension, but once it's all pulled tight, I have a nice little knotted flower. Then I bury the thread and start the next flower. So I decided to work them all in the same direction, splitting the arm of the fern stitch and moving out. 
I'll wrap five or six times in a Z direction so it angles the same as a diagonal bar of a capital Z um, and then I pull tight. Always blessing tension. And here is the finished cap. I still have a couple of tiny holes I might want to darn and I really want to add a violet to the design somewhere, but for now it's done. I really like how dimensional and tactile the different stitches are, especially in wool. Editing Amy says, thanks for watching.